Is it better? Oh yeah, much better, thank you. So um, we're gonna talk about command and control uh, through webhooks um, and um, that's going to be a big eyed lemur edition talk. I don't know why it is, but I like lemurs for some reason. So uh, the big words out of the way, uh, what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, we're talking about webhooks, but essentially from the tactical standpoint, uh, it's a uh, red team and pen tester challenge as Laurent talk was talking about, um, is when you're on site, if you're in a situation where you need to create command and control, it's, a, it's always a challenge, especially in secure environments. And um, the problem of outbound communication is that we're, we're gonna try to solve a little bit. Um, we're gonna go over HTTP webhooks concept um, and we're gonna try to establish uh, a synchronous one or two-way communication with C2 uh, command and control over webhooks. Um, and, but from strategic standpoint, really what we're trying to do is meet the blue team at their map of the world. Um, they are operating in a certain way and all we have to do is just adapt and overcome and that's, we're gonna try to do that. Uh, we're gonna try to feed off the land um, and uh, maximize the retooling capability on site. Um, I was introduced, but uh, essentially I have to say that my opinions are mine, <laughs> nobody else's, and apparently uh, Watson agrees with me, uh, which is good. Um, so enough about me. Meet Misha, the pen tester, real deal. He likes grasshoppers, he lives to eat them, he gets paid by grasshoppers and that's all he really cares about. Um, but really, Misha's day starts at nine o'clock, you know, you plug in, you get an IP, hopefully you go through the motions, of course you use responder, um, you know, you get a domain admin and then for all intents and purposes, your job is done and then all you have to do is just exfiltrate things and uh, you know, go back to the hotel, eat some lunch and you're done, right? Well, almost. And uh, to Misha, lunch is very popular, so you know he wants to get to his lunch as fast as possible. Um, but before Misha can actually uh, go to McDonald's and order his uh, number six with grasshoppers on a meal, um, he has a uh, job to do. You know, we're not going to concentrate on anything that he does internally before the exfiltration. We're going to talk about that uh, specific topic here. So 9.30 in the morning, uh, Misha has gotten the admin. Uh, Misha has um, probably gotten some of the data from, um, from a company and uh, tries to um, get it out, um, get to his C2 or uh, whatever the case may be. He's not able to do that, right? He is frustrated. What does he do? Um, well, essentially, you know, he's got lots of options, right? You know, Kimberly says, ain't nobody got time for that and, uh, you know, Misha likes that very much because Kimberly is really super cool. Um, so egress filtering, right? It's, um, it's easy for pen tester. There are so many things to do. Um, there is really no challenge here until you get to the point where all your tunneling is, uh, uh, is watched over um, your DNS ICMP. Um, you know, obviously you can shell out. Outside, you know, you can't get web-based shell and you can't access the cloud drives. Um, all right, so you're prepared for it, right? Because no one does the blanket egress filtering. You can get to, to your C2 through uh, cloud-fronted domains. Cloud-fronted domains are the ones that are basically, you know, in a cloud and then, you know, on providers that are accessible like AWS or whatnot. Um, so a little doubt in Misha's mind, but, you know, nothing to worry about. This, right, it can get out. Um, you know, some secure environments have, um, you know, configured it in such a way that you've got proxies. Um, and domain fronting doesn't work for Misha because, you know, everybody knows you can get out to AWS from certain environments, so he's done, right? There is nothing you can do. Blue Team says, um, not really, you know, you've got no friends here, you're done, Misha, go home, you know, eat your lunch, or order number six if you can afford it. Um, but most of all, just have a nice day. Um, 
that's Misha, really frustrated at 10 o'clock, you know, haven't been able to get out anywhere and, uh, you know, it, you know, grasshoppers are distant memory for Misha at this moment. Um, he's losing his school, you know, he really can't reach his C2, but he actually needs to do that. So we're going to try to help him do this um, right here. You know, he's sort of spaced out a little bit, you know, he is not thinking straight. So what we're trying for him to do is to think out of outside the box. Uh, what does that even mean? Well, assess the situation, look around you. What is available? What can you use uh, being in this specific situation, in this specific company? What can you do? Um, and you are on developer um, network. Uh, there are developers out there. For example, Misha hears that um, they're pushing some code here and there. Um, they're using some things called uh, webhooks. Misha doesn't know what webhooks are. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this, right? What, uh, what those webhooks are before we move on further. So webhooks, um, so the old way that we check um, for, we send the request to a web server and we check for a response. We say, you know, every five seconds we're gonna go out and say, hey, are you done finishing, you know, doing what we task you to do, the web server? And then we keep looping until we get the response. So naturally, you know, web server is not really happy with us. Um, so in some time we'll, we'll get the response and then server is, uh, uh, is okay until the next time we start, start asking him questions, stupid questions, really. Um, so the web server um, says, hey, you know what, stop asking me. Why don't I tell you when I'm done processing your request? Um, this is what um, the new way of doing webhooks uh, really is. Um, you submit a, a request for processing and when the processing is complete, um, web server just says, okay, well, give me the link to post the response back to you. Well, here's the link. When you're done, post it back to me. No problem, notify me when you're done and that way I'm gonna be sleeping and you're gonna be working and then you're gonna notify me when you're done. Most importantly, you're gonna do this asynchronously. So no more, um, you know, aggravated servers and uh, you're happy. So what do we do? Um, the link that we post in the webhook um, is just an action and a method or some variation of the same. And then on the client, will listen to, um, you know, for that sort of request, or response rather, from the server, um, and we have a callback that has, you know, we launched in the background to listen for it. So who uses webhooks? Um, it's nice, and therefore um, the developers are using them, right, continuous integration. Heroku just yesterday came out with a new CI service for themselves, um, you know, GitHub, Slack, um, any notification uh, services like uh, PagerDuty, Datadog, and you know internal teams as well. So hey, Misha is excited. He likes to learn about new things. Webhooks seem to be cool, and you know Misha being Misha, he still likes grasshoppers, right? For some reason, so he thinks about lunch all the time. Um, and so you know things started to kind of click a little bit, right? With our help. Um, so we start looking at what can we do with these web, web hooks while we're on the inside. Um, there are developer sites, they're using web hooks. You know, can, we, can, can we use uh, you know, this technology or this trick for, uh, for C2 contact, right? Um, yes, right, and so Misha is a little bit more excited here. Um, you know, he's got his thought process <laughs> started. And so uh, we're talking about C2 broker, right? C2, C2 is somewhere on the other side of the planet. How do we broker this information? Uh, so the traits of broker, uh, C2 broker is, it needs to be public, right? Because you need to get out to a site that is visible, and then that site needs to post somewhere else that is also public. It needs to see uh, a decent set of webhook uh, functionality, so we can be a little bit more flexible. And most importantly for the red teams is that we have to blend into the traffic, right? You know, things that are being watched. So whatever we can do to maximize our chances to uh, get out safely, um, that's what we're gonna do. Um, and so in this case, specific case with uh, proxy content management uh, in the middle, we want to be on a, you know, on a good behavior with proxies. And so, you know, obviously Misha likes to be, um, you know, cool. 
so he's going to try to do that a little bit here. Um, again, good candidates for C2 broker. Uh, how about CI services? How about back to GitHub, Slack, and all the other ones? They are public, they're visible, they have good API, and so you can try, right? So you're in scenarios where you're not allowed to connect outbound with web content proxies, we've established that. Um, you lost the tools on the inside, you need to bring them in. How do you do that? That may be one of your scenarios uh, to use webhooks to do that. Um, or if you're a little bit more advanced in this regard, then you want to switch um, the direction of your C2 and have the C2 on the inside. When you connect from the outside, you can also do that. So let's build your tool to get you going, Misha, right? So really nice uh, um, intermediate C2 broker is uh, a cat site of, you know, of some sort. And Misha does not really like cats. But, and actually Misha doesn't like cats with eight legs either. Uh, but if Misha can take advantage of that site, then you know, he'll be happy. Um, right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, evaluate a cat site. Um, a, a, a cat site is super popular, developer friendly, obviously. You know, everybody uses it. Um, has really awesome webhook API and is allowed, right? Um, companies do allow traffic to, to, uh, to GitHub, right? GitHub is um, specifically used for, for development, for DevOps, but also for infrastructure. So essentially uh, what, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna use GitHub to create um, a broker for our C2. So the test is going. The task is going to be for Misha to uh, to send a um, a request to GitHub uh, over Webhook. The Webhook will reach out to the C2 that Misha has on the other side of the planet, right? And uh, the C2 will respond through GitHub back into uh, the presence that Misha has on the inside of the uh, of the company. The way it sort of works with um, with Webhooks is is just that you store some notification on a GitHub, there is a link that wakes up a uh, agent on the other side and then uh, you circle back. Um, in this case, you still pull in some of the results, but this is done manually because you know what you've tried to ask for and so you, you can ask for, for a response. Um, GitHub is easy to set up. Um, you know, it's helping us from the red team perspective um, to set up up to 20 webhooks. So thinking ahead, um, you have a lot of functionality here. Um, GitHub is super REST friendly, you know, JSON payloads, everything is cool, set up for us, so we're gonna go ahead and choose what we are listening for, and what we're gonna be listening for are the issues and issue comments on the other side. And so, um, also, GitHub is trying to secure developer communication, storage, and all that good stuff, so we're gonna ride that wave, right? We're gonna use GitHub security to, um, to obscure our communication with uh, RC2 and our client. So, um, this is Octahook. Um, it's a little shell that allows you to uh, encode all these things that we talked about to, uh, to use the client, use the server, and proxy everything through issues and uh, GitHub um, communication to the C2. So essentially from the blue team perspective, all you're seeing is traffic to GitHub, traffic from GitHub, right? Um, it's all encrypted obviously because GitHub makes it easy for us. We just did ls-l on our C2, which resides somewhere in Eastern Europe, maybe. Right, so um, this, uh, this concept is asynchronous. Uh, we uh, execute a command on the, on, on the server on the, uh, on the C2, and then we manually pull the issue for completion, right? We send the status and say, hey, am I done, am I done, am I done? We view the issue number 612, and 612 has a response for us, which is nice, right? It's, it's a little shell here. So um, what, what is the delivery mechanism in this particular response? Um, 
every agent connecting to the C2 has the identifier. And um, you know, it's a straight, straight YAML over JSON to post the requests and get the responses out. Um, you use the, the uh, Git app tokens to uh, authenticate yourself with GitHub and it basically goes from there. Um, you, you, you can use app token. Um, you have some limit um, things that you need to take care of with the GitHub as far as throttling um, counters and uh, you know, posting limit, but for the most part, it's all extensible here. Um, and on the issue side, this is what you see on the GitHub, right? It's the, uh, the various types of requests that your Octa, Octahook uh, supports. You can do operating system execution, you can do content put, which we're gonna look at a little bit later. So, um, and obviously the, the C2 on the other side, it says, yep, you know, the issue is resolved, go ahead and look at your responses. So essentially it's like a ticket, right? Um, it, it's a ticket from your C2 to GitHub to close the issue and notify um, your agent on the inside to come back and check for it. Um, if you've got large payloads, you know, you can split them across multiple um, comments on the same issue. So it's very convenient. Um, this is how the request looks like. Um, you essentially, you know, you can extend it if you want, but uh, in the proof of concept, this is just LS, um, and the type of execution is the process. Um, more configuration, uh, but really what needs to happen here is that now if we're using webhooks over GitHub, for example, in this case, um, you can assume a role. You can be a client and a server on each side of the things, right? So you can be listening to, to the way GitHub uh, works by sending uh, responses through webhook is that it's, uh, it's a broadcast, right? So if you created two webhooks, then both of the webhooks are gonna get the JSON payload, right? And so you can play on this by saying, hey, you know, well, if I can listen to both, then I can be a server and a client, which makes it much easier for us because we can extend it even further. Um, we can do uploads through Git, um, obviously for lost tools. If Misha cannot get to his uh, impacted library, it's not on the customer side. You're working from a restricted Citrix environment. You know, you can pretty much reverse upload the, um, the library and, uh, and use it here. And uh, every agent that hooks up through, through GitHub uh, will have a directory with identifier, and this is where you place the content in. Um, so again, the roles, you can be client side and server side on either side of the, uh, of the execution. The C2 can be a client, you know, your agent can be a client. Um, two threads, command execution, and, and, and the web server itself that listens for, for the payload. Um, yeah, so you know, bringing more tools on the inside is exactly the opposite of executing something on your C2, which makes it easier for you to bypass the the proxy, and if, um, you know, because GitHub is is really allowed. Um, this is a, a little demo of how you would put a content from C2 if you forgot to brought your toolkit back into the organization, right? You touch a file or in this case, you will probably have a depot files on your C2, and then you would execute a put through Git um, to, to the local thing, and then you can pull it down by download. Um, but it's still uh, sort of um, not real time, right? It's you need to ask whether your upload has completed or whatnot, so it's, um, it's a little, um, you know, not automated enough. Um, let's see what we can do, right, to solve this issue. Again, coming back to what really webhooks are, um, is just a broadcast. And if we use GitHub as a central repository or broker of C2, then, um, you know, we can achieve real-time communication, right? And so essentially what we do, we assign two webhooks, one that goes to the C2 server, the other webhook, uh, webhook that goes to the client, to the agent that resides in the company. So essentially by me executing uh, ls-l on the C2, the request and the response is going to be coming in both ways. So I can have, um, you know, I, I, can, I can wake up both sides at the same time by that broadcast and uh, those sides that are client will listen for a response. The size that, that is a server is gonna listen for a request. 
And so that makes it um, a little bit easier for us to achieve real-time proxying via GitHub by creating just two, um, um, two endpoints. It could be different IPs, it could be different resources um, on the same server if you want to, but that's basically what you could do. Um, so let's see how that's done. So we put, uh, we, we turn on real-time communication, we execute NLS-L um, outside and we get uh, a response back. No polling, nor asking for viewing issue for response and so that's, that's basically the real-time shell that you can get um, from C2 back into, uh, into your uh, environment. You can reverse it, right? So you can say, hey Misha, it's 12.30, I wanna go to lunch. I'm gonna change the roles, flip the roles. I'm gonna make my agent on the inside a C2, and I'm gonna make a client on my you know, point of presence across the world, and that's how I would operate for the next uh, day until I get what I need from this company. So, really nice, right? A good day worth of work. Um, Misha's happy, you know, took him you know, a few hours to code it in. But then, you know, obviously Misha doesn't like to be alone. He likes to share things with a friend. Um, and uh, that may also be possible because right now you can extend, um, th this is a proof of concept for, for Git, right? But essentially if we know that continuous integration tools exist through various sites that are more than likely right now are allowed, right? Like Heroku maybe. Uh, Slack is a very popular thing. So you can write a plugin for how you want to communicate, you know, file puts and execution of command between the two. Um, so because you have, every agent has its own configuration and ID, you can create a logic where you say, I'm only listening for ID, you know, XYZ coming from this particular machine. So you can have a swarm capability where you are broadcasting requests and getting responses from where you need to be. So you can bring in a friend, right, a different agent that would be taking over your C2 capability and you can hand it off. You can change the role and you can hand it off to another guy. So um, yeah, so simultaneous, simultaneous execution on multiple agents may be possible. Um, flipping C2 direction may be possible. Uh, mitigation, um, webhooks are here to stay. That's, that's how developers will, will go forward with this, right? That's easy, it solves a lot of good uh, issues for them, um, and uh, the sites that would implement that, they're very popular and, and high ranking on the content proxy will, will still exist. Um, again, you know, if you're managing your, your, your systems well, uh, why not just restrict the specific developer to go to a specific site that they need to on a GitHub, like a, a repository, even from this specific machine. Do not open up just a blanket um, you know, communication to GitHub because that's, what, that's what's gonna happen um, here. You can uh, take a hard look at why you need to use GitHub. Do you want to have a local uh, repository of things that you need uh, local developers to use or infrastructure team to use? Uh, do you really need to go out to the social coding sites and, and, uh, and, and do that? And um, you know, if you're into deep behavior expansion, expect, um, uh, inspection, then um, there is no reason why you would need to have 612 issues right, opened up on zero line of comments and, or, or code in GitHub, right? That's a telltale sign of this particular, for example, uh, example of communication, right? So see what your developers are doing, why they're doing it, and, you know, restrict them accordingly. And from a red team, we're gonna keep writing the social coding um, until, you know, this sort of um, division happens uh, because, you know, possibilities are endless with meeting software right now. Um, you know, it's all gonna be, you know, widespread and um, yeah, so uh, essentially it's one of the things that can be done um, and if you have any questions, let me know.